Hi, I'm Mike Merritt, and in this video, we'll discuss the use of the tapply command in R. tapply can be used to apply a function to subsets of a variable or vector. In this video, we'll work with the LungCap data that was used in earlier videos in this series. You can find links to the data and the script used in this video in the video description below. Let's quickly read the data into R, and let's have a quick look at a summary of it, and let's attach this data in R. To access the help menu, you can place a question mark in front of the command name, or you can search it in the help search window here. We can see that the tapply function has a few arguments to be specified. x is the variable or vector we would like to apply some function to. fun is the function that will be applied. The index is a grouping variable that is the same length as x and it is used to create the subsets of the data. The dot 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 here are any additional arguments that need to be passed to the function we're going to apply. And this simplify equals true is to let R to know to simplify the results if possible. We'll take a look at the use of this later and we'll note that the default is set to be true. Now let's calculate the mean age of smokers and non-smokers separately. We'll use the tapply command. The variable that we're going to apply to is age. We will subset the data based on smoking status. The function that we will apply is the mean, and we will pass the mean command the argument of na.rm equals t, or true, letting it know to remove any missing values when calculating the mean. We can see here that we returned the mean age for both smokers and non-smokers separately. Now, a reminder that we don't need to include the x, index, and fun in the command, as long as we enter them in that order. We also don't need to include the na.rm equals true, as there are no missing values in this data set. We can see that the results are the same. In this video, I will not include the x index and so on, although I suggest that you may want to until the ordering of them becomes second nature to you. And as usual, we can save the output in an object for later use if we want to. Here, let's look at saving it in an object called m, and then if we ask r to return m, we can see the output here. Let's also quickly discuss the simplify argument. This is set to be true by default, which means that R will try to simplify the results when possible. Let's take a look at the output when this argument is set to false. Here, we can see that the output is returned in a list format rather than a simple vector. Most often, we would prefer the results to be simplified, and that's why it's the default value. But there are instances where we might prefer the output to be kept in a more complicated structure. A reminder that we can get the exact same results using square brackets to subset the data, as we're going to look at here. The main thing with using the tapply function is that it's just a more efficient way to get the same results. We can apply all sorts of functions, not just the mean. Here, we can take a look at applying the summary command to age separated by smoking status. Let's take a look at that here. Or we could apply the quantile function to the groups. Here, we're going to pass the quantile command, the probs argument, to let it know that we'd like the 20th and 80th percentile return. You can also build your own custom functions to be applied to subsets. Writing your own functions is a topic for a separate video. We can also apply a function to subsets created by multiple factors. Let's take a look at calculating the mean age for subsets based on smoking status and gender. To do this, for the index, which is the indicator of the groupings, we will pass R the list of both smoke and gender. We can then see that R returns the mean for each of the four subsets. And again, a quick reminder that we could do this using square brackets as well. tapply is just a bit more efficient and compact in terms of the amount of code required. We can take a look at using square brackets here. Here, we'll ask for the mean age based on subsetting of smoking status being no and gender being female. And we can do the same for all four groups. Now, while I won't discuss it in this video, I thought it was worth mentioning that the by function in R does pretty much the same thing as tapply, except it returns output in a vector format. I've included some extra code here in this R script. So you can download and play around with this script if you want to explore the by command a little bit. I hope this video has helped you see the use of the tapply command. Thanks for watching this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, visit our website, and check out our other instructional videos.